This beautiful looking thing is a Mercedes CLA 45S and it's basically the same as the A45 but it's a bit more grown up. It's for people who don't want a boy racery hot hatch but still want all that fun and performance. It starts from £52,000. You can save almost two grand off one through Carway. In fact, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can get a Carway. You can save an average of £3,600 on a new car. And if you're not looking for a new car but you know someone who is, just get them to Google Carway and we'll see them over there. Help them decide which car to buy and make Make sure they get a good deal on it as well. Let's kick off this review by talking about the engine because this is what makes the CLA 45S so special. It is the most powerful two litre four cylinder engine on sale today. 421 horsepower, 500 newton metres of torque. Look at the size of the turbocharger, that's why it produces all that power. This one has been handcrafted by a man called Pascal Duran. I wonder if he's a wild boy. That's a reference for people who grew up in the 80s, by the way. Anyway, this engine drives all four wheels via an eight-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox. Mercedes says this car can do 0 to 60 in four seconds dead, but I reckon I can do better than that. I reckon I can get it in the threes, so I'm gonna launch it. Now I've got my new specialist timing gear up here. So I put the car into race mode, left foot on the brake, floor the throttle, there we go. Yeah, that's quick got a time people we have a time check this out right come on come off it oh. <laughs> i'll let you see it for yourselves there we go not 60 3.7 seconds not sure why you need the extra four cylinders of the c63 other than having more is good because this car is well rapid this AMG gets the biggest brakes fitted to any CLA. So you've got 360 millimeter disc at front, 330 at the back, and the caliper gripping this front one has six pistons in it. It's huge. It looks really cool as well in this red. That's not gonna make it stop any quicker. It just works well with this white paint. Now I'm gonna do a brake test from 70 miles an hour. When I reach the comb, I'm gonna do a full emergency stop. I'm gonna use my specialist timing gear to see how long it takes me to come to a complete standstill. Let's go for it. Right, here's the 70. Oh, what are we gonna get? So it stopped, oh, turn these off, always happens. Morning lights. So it stopped from 70 miles an hour, check this out, in 48 meters. Let's see a performance upgraded brakes doing their job right there. This AMG gets a load of extra body bracing to make it stiffer over the standard car. The most obvious one is this front shock tower strut brace with a lovely AMG emblem on it. Underneath the engine, you've got a big metal brace as well. There's bracing going up into the windscreen pillars. There's extra diagonal bracing at the front and at the back. The track width at the front is a whole two millimetres wider over the standard CLA for a bit more front end grip. But at the back, it's actually five millimetres narrower, I think, to make this car a bit more playful than the standard one. The CLA45 gets some uprated anti-roll bars at the front and the back to reduce lean in the corners. It also gets lowered stiffened suspension. And in the UK, we get adaptive dampers as standard. So you've got three different modes. There's hard, harder and harder still. When you turn the car into a corner, it automatically breaks its inside wheels slightly to get the car rotating to make it feel more responsive. This car's four wheel drive system mainly powers the front wheels, but when you need some extra traction at the back, it can send 50% of the engine's power to the rear wheels. However, this is the Formatic Plus system, and that means the 45S has a rear limited slip differential. So with that 50% of the power from the engine, it can then send 100% of it to either rear wheel and what that allows you to do is over speed the outer rear wheel and effectively skid the car you can skid a front wheel drive biased four wheel drive car which is pretty insane now to do this you need to put the car into drift mode so you put it into race turn the stability control all the way off then put the gearbox into manual pull up on both paddles confirm that i want to drift and then you just turn into a corner and floor the throttle it's as simple as that look and it'll overspeed the outside rear wheel so you can go sideways. I mean, it's nuts doing this in what is effectively a front wheel drive car. It's a proper AMG, I tell you. They can always go sideways. Right, let's see what this car's like on a twisty road. So I've set it up in the individual mode because I want engine, transmission, 
and the exhaust into the sportiest setting, the diff into its almost sportiest setting, and the suspension in the mid setting because when it's in the firmest one, it's just a bit too bumpy for British roads. Got manual for the gearbox as well. Here's a corner. The steering feels sharp. It actually gives quite a good bit of weight and feedback. Now the diff's funny. Normally in a front wheel drive bars car, you would lift off to get the back end coming round, but the diff, the way it works is you actually apply a bit more throttle and it gets that diff to send power to the outer rear wheel. Then it really starts to come round and tighten its line. It's a bit unusual at first, but then you get used to it and start to go with it. This thing stays nice and flat and it will put a smile on your face as well. Especially that engine, which just loves to rev. <laughs> This thing is bonkers, it really is, and a lot of fun. Being the proper fully fledged AMG version, the 45 rather than the lesser 35 model, which is an AMG light, this car gets the Panamericana grille with the vertical slats. The 35 has the horizontal bar instead. Love the look of this, super aggressive. It also gets bigger front air intakes, and they're huge, aren't they? They look like they're gonna hoover up the road. This is the Plus model, so it has some extra bits and pieces on it, including this gloss around here, and canards, aero canards. It's odd word canard, it just makes me think of duck. Don't know why that is. Something to do with French at school, I think. Anyway, one thing that does annoy me about this though is, well, this is a real vent, cooling that rad there. Over the other side, it's just solid. Why don't they just let it be open? Down the sides, the CLA45 sits lower to the ground than the standard car, so it has a more menacing look. That's helped by the fact you get 19-inch alloy wheels as standard. I do love the design of these wheels, very similar to the ones I've got on my G63. You've got your turbo formatic badging there as well, some extended side skirts, and the car's body is five millimetres wider here at the front than the standard car. Just looks a bit meaner. What's also elegant? I mean, look, coupe style, frameless, Doors. Yeah, lovely. Easy to break that glass. Here at the back, the CLA45 has deeper, more aggressive rear bumpers to the standard car. And as you can see, look, it's got a diffuser, like a racing car. I'm not sure just how well this diffuses the air, whether it actually has any benefit other than just looking pretty cool. You've got your CLA45 badging there and the AMG over the other side. And this being the plus version, it gets this little, I want to say little, it's actually quite large, boot lip spoiler though it sort of looks like the upturned brim of a jockey's hat. Can you see that? It's quite similar, actually, this bumper to on the CLA 35, but the 45 gets the quad tailpipes. Look at this with the AMG logo on, rather than the twin tailpipes like you have on the 35. And, oh, <laughs> the lying buggers. <laughs> they look great, but when you look in there, just buried in there is, I don't know, is it, is it just one exhaust in there? Yes, it is. Faking it again. And oh, I've noticed it as well. Look, faking that. What's the point of that? That's fake as well. That's a real letdown because they do look cool. Here on the inside, there's some key visual upgrades over the normal CLA. The first thing you notice is, of course, the sports steering wheel. It has a flat bottom. You've got the AMG logo on it as well. It's trimmed in soft Nappa leather and grippy Alcantara. It's got these sports buttons on it here, so you can quickly go through different driving modes. And then these other buttons on the other side where you can configure different stuff, such as the exhaust and the suspension and the gearbox settings. Also, the paddle shifters for the gearbox have a nice metallic feel to them. The next thing you notice are the lovely sport seats so they're really really comfy they're body hugging and they have those seat base extenders if you've got long thighs that's really handy though if you eat in your car the bits all end up in there and go moldy i call that bit a crumb crevice sounds disgusting anyway moving on you also get aluminium pedals you get amg mat you get aluminium kick plates as well there's some amg logoing here on the dash and the interior is just the same as the normal cla which is lovely high quality great design with these turbine styled vents it's not all perfect though there are some cheaper bits like this wobbly section here for the climate controls but let's just move on from that and on to the fact that you get some amg specific dials though for some reason the person who's had this car before me has chosen to have one of the dials as a clock in a performance car. So let's change that immediately. So I can switch it to something a bit more sporty here. There we go. Let's go for the sport setting there. Yeah, this will be much better. Goodbye clock, go away. Let's have a rev counter. That is much more like it, isn't it? Here in the back, the CLA45S is just the same as the standard car. So good knee room, poor headroom, and that weird face that keeps staring at you like, yeah. 
Yeah. If you need a bit more space, then you're better off going for the A45S hatchback because it's got better rear headroom. In fact, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car where I compare it to the old A45. See how far the car has come on. Mercedes hasn't messed around with this car's boot either, so it's the same 460 litres, which is actually really, really huge. It's larger than that of its competitors. The only problem is that the shape is a little bit awkward. The opening on a BMW M235i Grand Coupe is a little bit more useful when you're trying to squeeze bigger items in. Now, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there. And that brings on to five annoying things about this CLA45S. The black paint on these alloy wheels is a little bit prone to stone chipping. Look, it's already been chipped here. It's especially bad if you go off the track and into the gravel on a racetrack. With the A45S hatchback, you can get an aero pack, which includes a huge rear wing, which looks very cool. Not here, can't have it at all. This is as big a wing as you can have. Due to its slightly larger body, the CLA45 is 40 kilos heavier than the A45, and weight matters in performance cars. As a result, it's 0.1 of a second slower to 60 miles an hour. There are only two standard paint colours, yellow and white. The rest are 600 pounds. Now you might be thinking, I don't mind, this white looks really cool. But yeah, this white is actually metallic, and so this is 600 pounds. The wide design of these seats means that kids in the back are gonna struggle to be able to see out forwards and where they're going, so they're more likely to get car sick. Also, when they get bored because their iPads run out of battery, they're gonna be able to just jab you in the neck through these holes, and that'll really do your head in. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. This new CLA uses roller bearings in its turbocharger, so it spools up quicker. There's also this duct which feeds air over the engine and over the turbocharger to help keep it all cool. And the engine has a closed deck design so that it can cope with 2.1 bar of boost pressure from that big turbo without exploding. In the UK, this car gets a sports exhaust as standard, so it's got a valve in it, and at the press of a button, it'll open to make the exhaust a little bit more raucous. Also, the car doesn't have a soft limiter, so you can rev it all the way to red line when you're stationary. To act like a total hooligan. Can't do that with an Audi. The only thing is though, this new CLA doesn't sound quite as good as the old CLA 45 because of noise regs. Most fast Mercedes are electronically limited to 155 miles an hour, and if you want to make them go faster, you have to pay some extra cash. Not so with the CLA 45S. It can do 174 miles an hour as standard. Being an MG, you get specific MG performance data in the infotainment system and track pace. It can time you around certain tracks, so it's got some preloaded there, like that. or you can import ones if they're not on the list. It also has a drag race timer, more suited to someone like me, where you can do your 0 to 60s and your standing quarters, and then telemetry if you're a real geek. These seats you get with the Plus Pack not only have a massage function, but they've actually been approved by the AGR, German Spinal Health Organization. Sporty and comfy. But what is the CLA like as a daily driver? Well, I'm going to put it into comfort mode, slackening off the suspension, reducing the throttle response, making the gearbox a bit more chilled, everything in automatic now. It's fine. You do get a bit of tyre noise, no wind noise really. These seats, even though they hold you firmly in place when you're cornering hard, they're also supremely comfortable over longer journeys. As for the engine and gearbox combination, well, let's just check it out. So here I am, pull along around 50 miles an hour. Yeah, minding my own business, then all of a sudden I decide that I need to overtake someone or something like that. Floor the throttle, gearbox, see that? Right on it. And now it's hauling, woo! Do that too often though, you are gonna affect the economy. So I'm averaging 26 miles per gallon. I'm supposed to do a bit better than that, over 30. Though, when I haven't been hooning it, it has managed over 40 at times, which is pretty decent. You know, if you nanny this, it could be quite economical. And then when it needed to be, yes, batch crazy. <laughs> I like this, I really do. The CLA45S comes as standard with the largest infotainment screens in the car, so none of the piddly small ones you can get on some lower models down the range. You also get satellite navigation with augmented reality sat-nav, so it uses a live camera feed which can beam that image onto the screen and it superimposes directions over it so you don't make a wrong turn, really cool. You also get the ambient lighting which has 64 different colours to choose from, so you're going to be forever fiddling with it, undecided.
There's also dual zone climate control. You get front and rear parking sensors and an auto park facility and keyless entry and go. If you pay an extra £6,000, you can get the plus pack and that includes LED adaptive headlights, the electric massage seats. You also get a Burmester stereo and traffic sign recognition and blind spot warning. But which version should you go for, the normal one or the plus pack? And what deal can you get? Well, I'm just going to plug the details into Carwow, which model I think you should go for. And I've got a decent offer back, with a bit of a saving. If you want to see what it is, you know what to do. You're going to have to click on the pop-out banner up there. I want your clicks. <laughs> So then what's my final verdict on the CLA45S? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I actually reckon you should go right ahead and buy it. Reason being, you basically got an A45S, which is a brilliant car, though it's in a cooler looking saloon body. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper than a C63. It's sort of a no brainer. Though personally, I'd still have the hatchback because boy racer.